for backstory, can you tell me how you got this bird, what you know about this bird, and that kind of thing? Yeah, so we've had him for a little over a year, maybe a year and a half. His old owners were really old, and he decided he hated the guy. And so the wife was the only one that could handle him, but her she was so frail and old that when she would pick him up, and they would pick him up on their arms because they couldn't hold him on their hand, um, he would rip their skin. So he actually broke her finger, her pinky finger. Through biting or mm -hmm. through biting, and that was kind of the last straw for them. So they were looking for a new owner, and a friend of mine worked at the vet clinic, and I had uh, just lost my African gray not too long ago. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll kind of go over and see what he's like. And so kind of got to know him, and he was really good with me at first, and um, but now he's not. They would feed him whatever they were eating. Yeah. So lasagna, yeah. slices of pizza. Breakfast, dish, lunch, and Yeah. Um, chicken wings, things like that. And he's got a lot of hormonal issues. As far as the, kind of the aggressions and the, the hormonal side of things, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 is like, we've had it, we can't take anymore. 1 is like, oh man, he's perfect. And where do you think he falls on that scale? And you can answer each for your individual experience. I would say 6 or 7 yeah. for me. Yeah. Because I can't even handle him anymore. Like, I can't get him out of the cage. I can't walk by his cage without him trying to attack me. And then, on the flip side of that, I can't spend more than a minute or two with him before he starts trying to regurgitate for me, trying to crawl on my back. He, like, sits slow, puts his butt on it. Uh -huh. If you only could pick two things to fix, we can't get you anywhere without diet and sleep being correct. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I see between the pellets that you're feeding um, the value of the treat is pretty low. So we immediately dial in on the foundations being completely off for this green wing macaw. Although these guys have made amazing improvements for him by just the transition from his old home to them, including the diet, it's still not where it needs to be, and the sleep especially is completely off. So although they say that the bird is covered for a certain amount of hours, their house is not quiet, the space is not quiet, it's not uninterrupted, and so that's why they're getting so hormonal, so many hormonally triggered behaviors is because of the environment. Holy crap. No, not one song. Step up. I'm gonna step back. Yeah, step back. All that body language is him very politely telling you no. Really? Okay. Um, if you could force it, you were gonna be bitten. Okay. 100%. So let's try it again. This time when you get a no, and why not? Well, probably because you don't know that I have treats. So try showing the treat. Okay. And now so is it the, like the head shaking? Uh, he was hiding. It was kind of all of it. So he immediately fluffed first. So all the feathers came up around his head and got super fluffy. Okay. Then his pupils started dilating. He basically started pinning his eyes. He got twitchy with his head and he started talking. Are you familiar with the FU feathers? Yeah, I watched your video. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so the FU feathers are a few feathers on the back of the head and neck, usually depending on the species. And that's usually a pretty accurate representation of how they're feeling. Okay. They communicate to each other through physical body language more so or more frequently than vocalizations. Okay. So your body language they're usually interpreting rather than a voice command of step up or fly. Like they're really looking at you and your intention through your body language. Right. And they're communicating back through theirs. Okay. okay. So this time you may need to show them a treat and drive them to step up. Is that you? Still less heightened. Yeah, it's better, right? So yeah, maybe if he comes to the front of the cage, he's more likely to do it. And yeah. you think he'll just climb on top and then we're in a whole different Yeah, I think that's what he wants to do. He wants to get on top of it. Now he just is, now he just wants to ignore me. <laughs> okay. Let's try to hold this out here and see if okay. that looks different. Step up. Good statue if you step up. Does he target you? She tried it with him and he she said he was very afraid of the stick, but it could have been her. I haven't tried with him yet. Okay. 
We'll wait for his body length to change, and then I want to have you keep watching the bird, and I'll have Jamie slowly approach, and I want you to see, tell me when you see him basically saying, like, I will kill you. Okay. Uh -huh. So watch him. Yeah, right there, huh? That's it. Yep. Yeah, okay. So that's a clear warning, so Jamie will walk back. That's him saying, he's, that's him communicating prior to bites, prior to screams. He's like, too close, back off. Okay. The more we can show that we, I hate to even say the word respect, but we acknowledge that he's like, recognize the bad, mm -hmm. then we step back from that. We're, we're communicating with him a clear communication, even though that's not really what we want. Right. I want that more than I want him biting or screaming or lunging or flying at him. Right. You know? What do you think? He's actually nervous about you. Mm -hmm. oh. See all that body language? Mm -hmm. No way. Okay. So, um, there's a couple things we can do. We can um, put his cage on the ground where he's naturally going to feel more vulnerable. Um, one risk that comes with that is if he's the type of species that likes to chase feet on the ground, like some cockatoos, some Amazons, um, then that would be a really bad decision. Do you know if he has a history of like biting feet? Not as well as I know. So then you fast forward to March of 2020, COVID hits. The number one thing everybody was concerned about was toilet paper. But, <laughs> but then realistically what happened is people all of a sudden lost their sense of security. We didn't know if there was going to be jobs, so our shelter was at risk, our homes, we didn't know how we were going to pay for our homes, if where food water was going to come from, if we could afford it, if we were going to die. So now the headlines went to like survival mode rather than anything else. Once we started all getting free checks to celebrate, we are not burned down our favorite cities, right? So what does that all mean? I think that birds have a hierarchy of needs, or you could look at it like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you're familiar with that, it's how to reach ultimate enlightenment uh, as a human being, and it's, it's kind of our list of needs. Well, with parrots, they seem to have this pyramid, and the bottom half is food, water, and shelter. Once food, water, and shelter feel guaranteed to the birds, then what happens is they move to the top half, which is unwanted behavior. So it's biting, screaming, feather plucking, not stepping up, um, uh, breeding, you know, all the unwanted behaviors. And if you really think about it in the wild, once a bird is fat and happy, then they can start to breed and they can start to have babies. But if they're on survival mode, there's no way that they're, if they don't have a secure place to make the nest, they're not going to be even trying. They're going to keep going until they find that secure shelter. So the reason that, uh, this is all just kind of my hypothesis at this point, but the reason that going from moving the cage to the ground is the shelter was all of a sudden in question. It's like, this does not feel safe. So how do I improve my shelter? So really, any, any behavior problem can start to be figured out when you say, okay, how can I disrupt food, water, shelter. Obviously, we don't want to intentionally withhold water ever. Sometimes it actually happens, but that's never the primary go-to. You don't want to withhold food, but you can modify how the diet's delivered and at what point, so it's uncertain, so he's wanting to work for it to secure that. Same thing with shelter. When we have, we have you know, 10 different birds uh, at home, and we rotate which one goes in each apiary frequently, so they never are like, this is Right? So we start to just, we constantly are screwing with food, water, and shelter so they don't have that guaranteed security of knowing that's there. And because of that, we help avoid coming out of that, you know, burn down your favorite city type mentality with the birds. So that's kind of like a long answer for that explanation, but it also will help you start to see things at home like, man, you know, if he thinks that, that cage is his nest, maybe we put him in a different cage um, or 
we feed them in a different spot, or we, you know, and you start to think, how do we, how do we disrupt a shelter? And, and on the surface, it's easiest to say, how can you make his life a little harder? And that sounds horrible, but then again, you go back to how are they hardwired in the wild? They're flying all day, and they're foraging all day in the hopes of maybe getting some food, but probably not, or maybe not, I guess. It's, it's not a guarantee. Right. Um, and we want to try to mimic that as close as possible. Really interesting. Do you want to do some targeting while I've got a uh, I'm going to start with the big tree. Your treat should be a third of that, but I don't know this bird and I want to go home with all my fingers. So I'm getting no attention. So I'm going to try to show the treats. Still no attention. So I'm going to go with what's working. He really is looking to you guys because he's like, dude, who's this stranger? I'm going to come to your side and I'll just try to be in the way. So I'm going to move this way so I have a more likely chance of keeping his attention. See this? When's the last time he ate? Um, this morning. We try to give him like barely as much as we usually give him so they can be a little more food motivated. Are you automated? <laughs> no. <laughs> because they didn't know better yet. <laughs> nice. So you saw how I got a little too low and his lower mandible was able to touch it? It was not ideal. See how you can only touch the upper? Then same thing with the treat, because I don't know this bird. Same thing, he couldn't reach his lower band on the bike. Okay. Okay. I'll click for you, but if you want to do that, sure. these are maybe usable, maybe not. Um, but I'll watch for the right time, and I'll click for it. Almost went too low with it. Right. Oh, sorry, sorry. So is that the aggressive target you're talking about? It is, and I'll explain why it happened. Okay. So and I almost corrected you before it got to that point, but you can see him engage. Okay. What I don't want is he's engaged and you, you pull it away. So I hold this. Uh-huh. Here, just hold that. Oh uh, yeah. Right? <laughs> That'd be really obnoxious. Uh, yeah. And then we were right at that point, so I didn't want to correct you. So what happened is with the target sick. With the target stick, when you held it like this, and he has this whole surface, he's going to get to here and grab whatever part he can. But if he has this whole surface, you could move to, okay, let's say this is the perch. You okay. could have it here, so he can only reach from the edge of the perch. Oh, to so far. okay. I was too close to his bubble, I guess. So. Partially, but because this isn't a traditional T stand, we don't want to risk him falling off the edges. Right. So instead of being here, like that, he can only touch the tip of it. Oh, I see. <laughs> A little closer. Pause there. Right down slightly. Right there. Too many distractions. And go ahead and, uh, rest. Oh, yeah, rest. Relax. So in that case, yeah, too many distractions. Ooh, we're gonna get a treat for that. <laughs> <laughs> So, do, does anybody know why I clicked for that? Because it didn't react. It's, it's a good thought. Any, any other guesses? You have a guess? <laughs> so, was the ruffle like a reset? You guys are all getting towards it. Do you have a guess? <laughs> so, it is an incompatible behavior. He is not going to be fluffy if he is pissed off. Oh. And I want to encourage more of those behaviors that are like relaxed and calm and not aggressive. Remember, if they learn something, they're pairing it with the emotion. Right. The fact that he ruffled and fixed his feathers meant uh. he was content enough to do so. Keep going, keep going right there. Nice. And even how you were like, your, your beak's open, I'm going to touch it to you, okay. totally fine. Yeah. In the beginning, we just wanted to know that he touches it and gets a treat. Cool. So we're going to pause the session there. That looks, that looks really good. Um, you can have a seat. We'll kind of chat about some of the things that we saw.